7 a.m. in Seattle, the daily ritual begins. Soon this DC-9 fan jet will join the fleet of 20 airplanes operated by West Coast Airlines. It will become Flight 941. It is a special plane for a special airline, a regional airline. In the next few hours, Flight 941 will directly affect thousands of people in the northern west portion of the United States. Accompanied by the clanging clatter of departure, the ritual of motion begins. is a testament to the achievement of the 20th century. In three short decades, the airplane has progressed from novelty to necessity. But as commercial travel expanded, the smaller communities found themselves isolated from major air terminals Providing transportation between these local and urban terminals became the function of the regional airline. In 1946, the Civil Aeronautics Board granted the first regional certificate to West Coast Airlines. Today, there are 13 regional carriers. adapted readily to the sophistication of the jet age. Today, it's routine to fly non-stop across the oceans or coast to coast. The regional airline is different, described by many as a repetition of takeoffs and landings. But for stewardess Carol Clark, working on a regional carrier is a personal experience. I've been to every city we service many times. But it never gets dull. That's why I wanted to work for a regional airline. Our flights don't last six or seven hours. They're short. Passengers are usually aboard less than an hour. That gives me a chance to meet people. It's gotten so I can greet some of our regulars by name. I feel that I help make their trip more enjoyable. With 12 scheduled trips each week, I cover a lot of miles. This morning, I started in Seattle. DC-9 today, huh? Oh, yeah. Flight 941 to 230. Fine. Stay when I get back. Okay, my And so the machinery of flight begins. Roger, West Coast 941 off point 30.
A Jet Age airline, a gigantic complex dominated by a cacophony of voices, charts, numbers, codes. Its operational nerve center, dispatch. Like a giant brain, it feeds, filters, analyzes all data necessary to modern aviation. The dispatcher shares the responsibility with each captain for safety and operation of all scheduled flights. Patterns of pilots, planes, routes, mechanical difficulties, fuel loads, arrivals, departures, facts, statistics, check, double check, weather, the most unpredictable element of flight. Before flight 941 can be cleared for takeoff, the dispatcher must weigh, examine, evaluate. Then he must decide. The changing and unpredictable convolutions of weather affect all flights. As a public service, the U.S. Weather Bureau supplies the latest weather information to major airlines, private planes, regional carriers, and military craft. The weather information is analyzed by the dispatcher, discussed with the captain. Fuel load assigned, navigational route selected flight plan conceived, and so the mechanics of flight are formulated, enabling flight 941 to slice through the sky at nearly 600 miles an hour. Twelve forty is departure, Mr. Williams. We'll board at gate number two today. Thank you very much. Have a pleasure. Uh, may I make a reservation on the yeah, plane sure out of here in Park Law, San Francisco? Yes. Uh, listen, I want a helicopter ticket for Berkeley. Would you like to make a return reservation? Oh, no, I'm going to down there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. From Canada to Utah, from Montana to California, the people come forming a kaleidoscopic portrait of motion. A regional airline, providing links in the multifaceted chain of commercial aviation. Passengers slated for cities outside regional boundaries are transferred to other airlines serving these destinations. are a major service provided by all regional carriers. The Telephone Reservation Center provides the latest available information on passenger bookings, both immediate and future. Passenger space on scheduled flights is always kept current, allowing any cancellations or new bookings to be immediately relayed to any one of the numerous ticket offices located within the network of the regional airline. An airline like West Coast prides itself on those individual extra services offered to its customers. Mr. Carmichael, how are you today? Fine, thank you. My secretary called this morning uh, regarding my reservation from Corvallis to San Francisco. Yes, I have yeah. your ticket ready for you. Fine. Will this be on your credit card? Yes, it will. Did she make arrangements for a rented car for me in San Francisco? Uh, yes, she did request a budget rent a car for you at the San Francisco airport when you arrived. The flight will transfer in Eugene to uh, flight 941, which is the DC-9 fan jet. Have a pleasant trip. Digested, analyzed by the metallic chuckle of this computer, are more than 25,000 individual aircraft parts. A giant maw of codes, digits, specifications. This computer lists the name, number, stress point, and position of each part 
now ready for physical examination. The information is stored on these memory tapes, translated into functional work assignments. And the maintenance personnel methodically pursue their minute inspections. Probing. Dissecting. Analyzing. Always searching for the slightest signs of mechanical stress. In 1958, this F-27 prop jet was introduced to commercial aviation. The effects of this type plane were instantaneous, ideal for the regional airline. Its speed and efficiency supplied important new benefits, more flights, new routes, better and faster service. Senior Captain Jack Peacock has been with West Coast Airlines from the first day of operation, December 5th, 1946. I know we've come a long way in a short time, but the attitude of the airline is still the same. It's a personal carrier. I remember when we first started, we only had four DC-3s. We went from Seattle to Portland. In fact, the first DC-3 we used is now at the Oregon Museum of Science. It's hard to believe that it's a collector's item. Of course, the kids get a big kick out of seeing it. The plane's a novelty to them. They've never seen anything like a DC-3 before. Don't forget, they're jet-age children. And so, Flight 941 continues the rhythms of motion. Eugene, Oregon is a typical hub city served by a regional airline. With a population of more than 175,000, it is a dynamic center in the Pacific Northwest, housing important industries and a major university. 
a regional carrier establishes essential links of prosperity to the small and intermediate-sized communities. Businessmen representing industries located outside areas served by major air terminals can finalize business transactions, expand their markets, diversify their products. Local service carriers have been in operation only 20 years. Yet, in these two decades, it has become a way of life. Today, more than 10 million passengers annually fly more than 2 billion miles on 13 regional carriers now operating in the United States. And of the more than 600 cities authorized to receive scheduled airline service, more than 400 are served exclusively by the regional airline. From a city like Eugene, for example, the businessman has access to every major world market. All he has to do is make an interline connection at San Francisco. And from there, the world. carefully monitored by the giant eye of the FAA's Air Route Traffic Control Center. This one at Auburn, outside Seattle. There are five such centers serving the nine western states, each responsible for keeping all aircraft safely separated from each other within an area covering approximately 180,000 square miles. All aircraft fall under their jurisdiction, whether commercial, private, or military plane. In an average 24-hour day, these specialized controllers register almost 6,000 airplanes, accurately pinpointing position, speed, altitude, route, and estimated arrival time at predetermined points along the scheduled run. It is an intrinsic part of air safety. Okay, Marv, I want West Coast 756 altitude now. West Coast 756 altitude. Okay, now I want a reporting 10. Northwest 29, radar contact, continue heading 250, radar vector to Seattle. Radar contact, West Coast 754 at 14,000. Air Force 33259, it has taken a huge ensemble of men and machines working in unison to allow Flight 941 to reach its destination. San Francisco, a nucleus of international travel, laced with a complex series of runways merging into hundreds of airlines, embracing the entire world. Flight 941 has completed the first leg of its journey, but there is no time for rest. 
the DC-9 will continue back to Seattle via Spokane, bearing its new identity as Flight 956. The regional airline has become a vital and necessary part of commercial travel. From a major air terminal like San Francisco, the passenger walks with the world at his elbow. A simple interline connection will place him on any airline to any destination. May I help you, sir? Yes, we were ticketed in Seattle and we have a connecting flight with TWA to London. Uh, will our baggage go straight through or do we have to pick it up here? May I see your gate pass, please? Sure. Yes, your baggage has been sent straight through. If you could check with TWA, please. Just go through the concourse and to your left, if you would. Even though you do have a few hours, it's a good idea to check in now. Okay, thank you. Come on, sir. Thank you. The motion of modern flight never ends. It only begins. For in the second half of the 20th century, the philosophical concepts of space, time, and distance have been reduced to the simple price of an airline ticket. In a few hours, some 50 men and women worked in unison to prepare this DC-9 for its return flight. A complex exercise in logistics and communications. Yet even now, the circle of those concerned is widening. Air traffic controllers, radar operators, central dispatch officers, all following the mighty machine as it wings its way through the night sky, known only as Flight 956. Six Spokane Tower, Roger, report runway in sight. Let's close 905 Spokane Tower, Roger, report runway in sight. Let's close 905 Spokane Tower, Roger, report runway in sight. Dispatch. Roger, 956 is on Spokane at 